You might know what I'm gonna kind of ask you next, but speaking about people and their own personal emotional tier lists, you've probably heard a lot of people complain about this character and I'm gonna ask you because I think with the answer you've been giving me, I really wanna know what you think about Saberwolf and if you think he is broken or has broken features and do you think he's overpowered? Like some people will say. <laughs> Oh, the, the dirtiest of the dirty saber wolf. <laughs> the dog, yes. yes. yes oh, well, I bef before I even make any comments, I want to just say that I feel I personally feel personally feel that saber wolf is definitely higher than everyone else. Right. Um, he, he's that that's that's my personal tier list right there. Right. Um, as for if I think he's overpowered, I I honestly think. I used to think he was overpowered. Right. I really used to think because I had never really seen the untapped potential Saber Wolf could do. Instead, I was more looking at what I couldn't do. Right. And that kind of just clouded my judgment. Um, but at this point, I just feel like he is probably one of the better, if not the just best character in the entire game by just a, by just a slight margin. Right. But, uh, but that is just the character itself. Yes. Um, with other people playing Saber Wolf and, and trying to find out exactly what he can do, that's, you know, an all, again, that's in a whole different playing field. Like, you guys haven't, I, I believe, you know, nobody has seen the full, full potential, you know, like that can take Saber Wolf and just do every single thing that he was meant to do. Right. You know, a lot of people like to pick up small parts of Saber Wolf. And, and apply to their game and and that's where you see a lot of different saber wolves doing some of the you know some different things here and there that may work for them you know and um, a lot of people may not understand that yet mm. which kind of sparks the moment of you know saber wolf he can do anything he's the best you know like mm. get a real character you know it, it it it's quite common that happens that way but but the thing is it, it takes it takes a while to understand what he truly can do and I'm still myself I'm still learning as well mm -hmm. you know like what he can do as well and I've seen a lot of players um, offline and online especially online that are absolutely amazing yes. with Saber Wolf yes. and it makes me think you know what I've seen something completely different I need I have a long way to go to learn and that's what I feel like everyone should have you know as long as they just feel like you know, there. As long as they don't feel like there's nothing I can do, this character is broken and stupid. You know, like Saber Wolf is the best at putting that illusion on at the moment. Yes. You know, and and since this game is so young. Yes. And early, um, people will find ways. I'm still trying to find my way, and it goes again back in Street Fighter. You know, a lot of people thought you know, like some characters are really broken, and then these. All of a sudden, these random new characters come out of nowhere, and they're just like way better than anyone ever thought that they were gonna be. And this game is heading in that in that similar direction. You know, personal tier lists are gonna change, and eventually, there's gonna be a a moment in time where everybody agrees on one tier list, or at least the majority agree, will agree. And uh, but uh, in terms of if if I think Saber Wolf is broken or over overpowered i don't think that right really um it's it's a hard matchup personally other people may have an easier matchup with it but uh i i'm not sure like it, it's it's a really touchy subject because you know a lot of people will say he's broken a lot of people will say no he says he's okay mm -hmm. and um i think that's where personal tier lists will come in handy personal matchups you know it's more of a I, I see it more as a personal bad matchup than an actual overall kind of thing right one of the things that I heard you say was that you would say in your opinion he's the best and it's a it's a it's a small sliver to like being the best who would you say is 
the second, would you say, the, the second best in, in your opinion to what you've seen? So who would you then say as the other character? Who would be the, the close first or the second? Oh, um, now that, that part is when it fluctuates like crazy. So I used to think, who did I used to think? I used to think that right below Saberwolf, it would either be Jago or Sadira. Right. Um, because Sadira, you know, as everyone knows, her best mix-ups are in air, in the air. Mm -hmm. You know, and and her ground game is is above average. She has a really good ground game. She has great normal. She she can uh, she can basically make you waste shadow counters. And uh, especially, you know, when, when she feels like it, she can just mix it up and go in the air and cross you up. And, and as long as a Sidira player is thinking about it, you know, and he can be completely safe in the air with really smart projectiles. And not to mention the instinct. A lot of people have figured out and agree that Sidira's instinct is the best in the game. Mm. And that alone can be an immediate comeback factor to yes, win games. I agree. You know, um, with Jago... I feel like it it's still fluctuating because like Jago's an incredible incredibly balanced character. He he has some of the basic moves. He has a basic dragon punch, basic fireball, you know, quoting from Street Fighter terms. Mm -hmm. And it's up to the player to use it how they feel like it's most important. You know, like saying as if Saber Wolf gives me problems as a Jago player. He, Saber Wolf may not give problems to another certain Jago player mm. because it, it that more of a Jago matchup. It depends on the player. Yes, I agree. I, that that's what I feel, and um, and that's why I always say it's fluctuating. You know, like mm. one person may have problems with that matchup, as to another person may feel completely comfortable. So it's really really hard to say, but I would definitely have to say, you know, if I would have to give a top three, it would be like Saber Wolf. Sadira and Jago. Of course, you know, like Sadira and Jago, not sure who's in order, but I think it's just always Those moving around. Three. Okay, and it's always fluctuating. Well, mm -hmm. well, thank you for that. That's really interesting to find that out from you. Can mm -hmm. you. I, I'd like to ask you this question. What do you think about the harsh criticism that Killer Instinct has got as a game from potential people that haven't even played the game as well as some people that may have played it may have touched on it and they think that it's competitively not a viable game or it's quite shallow what do you think about some of the harsh judgment and criticism that killer instinct has got and even maybe some of the well-informed arguments that you might hear people say about it what, what do you personally think about it um i honestly think people have the right to feel like saying anything that they want <laughs> mm -hmm. about this game or the Xbox One. I've heard so many things. Honestly, it comes down, I, I feel like it really comes down to just two particular issues. Right. The price tag, mm -hmm. which I've I've actually got, a, got some feedback from SCR, you know, that the price tag is one of the main problems, you know, and as well as whether or not they agree with the amount of mind games that Killer Instinct produces. Um, being able being able to the most important aspect about the game is being able to play it. And you right. know, this it does it requires a lot of money to actually pick it up. And once you finally have it in your hands, then the next thing you have to ask yourself is, is this the kind of mindset that I like to have in Killer Instinct? Are are these the mind games that I like to have? You know, do I have fun playing this? You know, um so, I think the amount of criticism that this game has received, it's it needs to be addressed for sure. You right. know, it needs to be looked over because um, this game, you know, like I could say it's a great game. This person could say it's a great game, but you know, we're not the immediate voice of the entire outlook of the game itself. That's why everybody that has the game that are that's enjoying it has to, you know, work together to bring it out, you know, and showing it to the world more than ever. That's why one of my main goals is trying to get this game out to the main stage. 
right. to show everybody, you know, that that you know it you can play this game and no matter what game you came from, shooters, fighting games, MMOs, it's for everybody. Right. And and it's just incredibly unique like that. And and not a lot of games can pick that up. Mm. You know, not a lot of games can really introduce a whole wide variety of uh you know genres you know people that came from different genres over to this game and um i think that's definitely the key you know like um as long as we can start as long as we keep on showing people on a consistent level how great this game will be and that they can pick it up for themselves and they will be confident that you know i'll be good at this game in no time Mm -hmm. it's so easy to play you know then price tag the price tag won't even be an issue, mm. you know. And and um, of course, there comes another issue whether or not it's worth getting and what games are coming out in the future. But th- there are a lot of people that have fighting games, Street Fighter, whatever. Just you know, they they buy the console and they only have one game. They don't play any other game. Mm. So I have to, you know, I have to think. Then what is the difference with Killer Instinct? Yeah, I know it is a big price tag, but you know, if the fighting game will, you know, like make you satisfied with every other bit, like how it did with Street Fighter, or um, you know, like any other fighting game, then it, there shouldn't be a difference. Yeah. I mean, as long as you invest in it as much as uh, as much as uh, you know, we want you to. Yes. You know, because I invest a lot of time in this game, and I only have. Killer Instinct and Dead Rising 3, and I, I have to personally say it was worth it. It was right. absolutely worth it. I'm going to ask you if you could change one thing about the fighting game community, be it good or bad, what would it be and why? <laughs> I would probably change. I would probably change the way people view certain games. I'd probably change the way that they have their immediate perspective about a game. Because from what I see in forums, in in you know, like in person, online, on stream, mm-hmm. the moment that they see a game, a lot of people are very quick to judge. Mm. And and when that and then when that happens, they're throwing away immediately so much potential whether they invest the, invest so much time whether they had the potential in, to invest time within a similar fighting game to the point where it motivates them to travel or to go to a tournament and it's kind of like a it's kind of like a virus from when that happens mm-hmm. you know like the moment you step in the moment you take a game under your wing give it a chance you love it and it becomes addicting and then you go out to tournaments, you meet other people, it's, it's, it becomes wildfire. Um, I think that's the only thing I would change because I do see a lot of people, they, they, you know, they are very quick to judge. You know, um, the moment uh, they heard Double Helix was behind the game, yeah. they weren't going to play it. The moment they saw the system, you know, they weren't going to play it. They, the moment uh, they, you know, introduced more than just combo breaking, they weren't going to play it. <laughs> but... The thing is, it, it it's speaking to you. It's saying you can be so unique in this game. So that way, if you become one of the best, then everyone will know that it's you being yes, the best. Yes. Not just picking up a character, you know? And it's just like, what more can you ask from that? Because that's what everybody wants. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to play a fighting game saying, I'm good at this game. Not because of a character. You know what I mean? That yes. that and and when somebody criticizes somebody for picking a character for becoming good, it's just like that's probably the ultimate disrespect, in my opinion. I agree. Because a lot of people, a lot of top players, you know, when they pick up games and they learn the whole cast, they work so freaking hard, you know, to win tournaments and all that. And and you know, I'm probably just scratching the surface because I have no idea what they go through, but I could imagine. That, you know, when people say, yeah, he won that, you know, game just because he's in that character. It's just like, geez, mm. you know, all of that. It's just like they have no idea how much they just <laughs> showed a lot of disrespect. But, um, like, honestly, I'd probably, 
stick with you know I I probably change that mm -hmm. you know I, and indeed I'd probably change that and and it, I feel like you know once people are able to change that then then this community will just get way bigger mm -hmm. it, and it would start inviting way more players and I feel like that's definitely one of the biggest key wow. elements for sure you're giving some excellent answers today Grims I'm telling you that but <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm no, on my really. A game man you are you are bro you are you are you're just, you're just <laughs> flying high what are some of the things you would personally like to see added to Killer Instinct in the future be it uh, new new features, new modes, characters. Is there oh. anything you'd like to see? Okay. For all well, before I even answer that, okay. I want like my personal request would be a crossover, one character crossing over, and that would be one of the battle toads to enter Killer Instinct. <laughs> I said it. I said it. You can hate me for it. You can sue me, but. You cannot deny the fact that once you play Battletoads and you're beating up on one of those pigs and your foot turns into a giant boot or your head turns into giant ram horns, you cannot say that cannot be in Killer Instinct. Uh, because... <laughs> this, this is just great. This is just great. Uh, man. It, it, cause the thing is, for me, it would just be so funny. It would just be so hilarious. Like, it would just be just... You know how when you play Spinal and Spinal just laughs and he's just running across the screen? And it's just... It cannot... It, it, it can't help but make you laugh. So when you're saying that, like, about Battletoads, it's just it's just so, so funny and just so true. But, but go on, exactly. carry on, carry on, carry It on. would fit so well. It would fit so well. But um, if there was anything that I could change, you know, there's actually a lot of stuff that I thought about, but they're actually taking care of it. Like, for instance, like, lobbies... For instance, that's what was on everyone's minds. Yeah. They want lobbies to happen. I wanted lobbies to happen, and you know, I, I think it's happening. Um, but I would, if if I would have to pick anything, I would probably pick online training mode because this game really, uh, you know, it really, um, it really helps once you're in the lab figuring out all sorts of different kinds of techniques and and secret tech and whatever and. I feel like this game rewards it the most, you know, um, once you start figuring it out because, um, like I said, you can do anything in this game. Mm -hmm. You can do, you can do practically anything. And if you had a training buddy online, then you know both players just figuring out all of these new maneuvers and everything. I feel like it would just reward that the most out of any other game. Yes. Um, let's see, and if. What would what I thought would be pretty cool would be like um, kind of like a online survival mode. Okay, so what that would what that means is let's say there's like a separate you know let's say there's a lot a lot of these top players that go online. Everybody wants to play them, right? Right. And uh, and it's kind of similar to like a lobby system. You know, where you just wait your turn, you get beat, the next person comes in, whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, it'll show up their names. Like, on, on you know, online, it'll show, like, the rooms and who's in there. Right. And let's say, you know, on the forums, people want, you know, people want to play this person. People really want to play this person, whether it was, like, somebody that just won a tournament or a big name. And I, I would say, like, the slots would be 50. 50 slots. People would have to fill those up. You know, one, two, three, four, five, all the way to fifty, and the person that's hosting hosting the room would have to play through those fifty players. But if that person loses, the entire room drops. Wow. And then and then people would look for you know the next big name to play because that's what I feel like would be pretty awesome. You know, kind of like online survival mode. Anybody can do it as long as they fill the. 50 slots. I think it has to be a requirement. You have to fill 50 slots and then, you know, in if the if the main if the champion loses, it drops the entire room, says you are not worthy, go try again tomorrow. <laughs> you know? That <laughs> Wow, that is That's a... what it, but it gives everybody a chance to yes. to play that person that they've always wanted to play against and, you know, god forbid they never got the chance because maybe that champion lost too early, right. but and again, you know, it's, it's the champion's fault, you know. <laughs> that is but, crazy. Uh, that, I think that would be pretty cool. That is that is a crazy idea because you think about it, the kind of hype of somebody. Imagine if they're able to spectate it as one. People, like, talking over the game, like, oh, my gosh, he lost at 48. Can he? Do you know what I mean? Like, he lost at the 48th one. And then everybody dropped it like, no. 
Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So it would just be so excited. It would just be ridiculous. That's a, that's a phenomenal exactly. idea. Hopefully somebody from Double Helix is listening to this and they're like, let's see if we can get in contact with Grimson. <laughs> yeah, that would be a dream come true. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Can I ask you, what are some of the things that you maybe study or studied or have done for a living? What Do you mind if I ask you that? Like what you do away from the game? Like some of the things you either study or, 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 or what you work as? Yeah, sure. Um, well, so far, I well, uh, last year I started studying to become a veterinary technician. Whoa. Um, and uh, it, it was it was really weird how I actually got into that because uh, I I was at a time where I, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do uh, with my life, and uh, I was just like, okay, well, I like I like dogs, I like cats, might as well start there, right? Mm. And uh, so when I started there, you know, it, it took me about a year, and I got my associates right off the bat, and and then I started working at a clinic, and you know, I I felt like it was pretty good. I th- I felt like it was fun. Um, it definitely feels great working at uh you know uh um working at an op- occupation where you just really feel like you know what to do inside out. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, there's this, like this notorious feeling where you know veterinary technicians are incredibly unappreciated, and I kind of f- figured out that feeling pretty quickly. So, right. uh, I, for the record, I do not like. I feel like work shouldn't be work. Work, you know, if work shouldn't have to feel like work. Mm-hmm. That that's that's my opinion, and um, that's when you know at the same time I was. I started up my YouTube channel and, you know, like, uh, you know, like my, my second passion was just video games and I really love video games, not just fighting games, but just everything in general. And, and I had a lot of fun, you know, um, posting up all of these videos, of all these other different games, walkthroughs, playthroughs, horror genres, all of this stuff. And it's just like, this is what I love doing. And I know people can make a living out of it. Why not? Why couldn't I die? You know, mm. so I, I'm... I put myself on the road for that as well, and uh, you know, and I'm, I'm just really excited, you know, because every single day, you know, I've I've learned how to use all all these different video editing programs and and uh, putting out content for everyone to watch, and it's just probably the best thing I could ask for. Mm. So, um, but yeah, being a veterinary technician was definitely something that I I enjoyed being at the time. Mm. But now I'm moving on to something that I feel could be, you know, beginning of the rest of my life, basically. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you, bro, for sharing that. This is my last question to you. You've Uh now won a major tournament. You defend the rank online fearlessly. What's next to Mr. Grimms? Well... I want to say see you at Evo. Right. I want I want to say that right now. Okay. Um. But as of right now, I'm definitely trying to see where my, where my priorities are, mm-hmm. and see if I can plan this thing out because SCR was actually a blessing in disguise for me. I wasn't gonna go. There was no way I was gonna go to SCR because I just had way too many obligations here at home. Right. And things just happened to clear up right at towards the end. And with Alex Vai having emergency registration open, I was able to attend. Right. Skin of my teeth. I just was able to to attend. And you know, like after what happened, after my experience, I wanted to I wanted to keep going. So I want to try my best to plan it out. Evo is definitely a possibility. Mm. Of course, NCR, which is actually coming up within like a month, a little bit over a month. Is gonna come soon, and I want to try that as well. Mm. But for now, I I definitely don't want to say no, right? Because it's 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 now a possibility, and right. I'm gonna work my hardest to try to get there. Right. So, do you think that you would, being a major tournament winner now, and you have the desire to just continue on? Do you think sponsorship is something that you would like to look towards? obtaining from where I from where I started I never really thought about it right and um, I never really I still don't think about it at this point 
up until I started thinking about my real life friends that I used to play with, they're in sponsorships. It's it's kind of like a mainstream thing now. It's like everybody's in a sponsor, and and I feel I do feel left out because right. um, you know the way I see it, you know, like uh, I never really experienced that that luxury really that that privilege and uh if i if if i'd have to it, or if i could then it would definitely have to be under you know something that is definitely with my close real life friends because i don't really consider myself tournament heavy right and uh and maybe some sponsors are looking for that you know some person that's willing to travel to here to there everywhere to you know go to tournaments and you know, if anything, I would just, you know, I would just join with my friends here in NorCal, you know, and um, whether it's a sp being sponsored or not being sponsored, I think that's most important to me because it keeps that um, that feeling of home close right, by. Right. I get homesick very easily, right, right, <laughs> very easily, right. and, and and being around my friends in NorCal, it really works out for me and. I just feel like, you know, if something happens along the lines with that, then why not? Mm -hmm. You know, sure. And uh, I would let it happen. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say or or just speak about that I may not have, have, have asked you at all before I wrap the interview up? Or... Mm, well, thank you for giving me the opportunity My to uh, talk My with pleasure. you. That's that's one thing. I, I respect what you do. And... Uh, it's 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 awesome having to speak to somebody um, with those questions that you had. I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed my time um, talking with you. Um, as as for everyone else, you know, like for everybody like that plays this game that has trouble deciding whether or not they want to get into you know fighting games. I mean, Killer Instinct is a perfect place to start. Like I mentioned before, people came from shooters, MMOs, everything to play Killer Instinct and I feel like it's up to us you know and it's not up to uh, a winner at SCR it's not up to up and coming underdogs it, it I mean like it's everybody you know it's not just one person it's up to everybody to make this game amazing uh, the way it is and and I encourage everybody to not only step up their game but to help promote this game mm -hmm. you know to the point where it becomes so incredibly mainstream because Killer Instinct is a game that rekindled my childhood more than any other game and and I just find myself you know always trying to uh, uh, try my best to get this exposed as much as uh, other people want and and I hope that maybe in the future it will mm. of course it's too early to tell but I think we're going at a good pace and um, and yeah, I think I think that's pretty much everything I can think of at the moment. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, literally, I will put all of Mr. Grimm's social network in the Facebook, the Twitter, the YouTube, so you can actually catch up on all of his streams and everything in the video description. And I just want to say to everybody, thank you for watching this interview. Take care, and we'll see you in another video. Bye for now.